Hi everybody. <laughs> Sorry if I'm laughing through this. This is my third time trying to record this video. Uh, the first time I just lost something that I needed. Uh, the next time I got a phone call in the middle that was honestly a butt dial. Uh, but we're going to get to the video. Now this is not an unboxing video. I probably won't get that out until next week because I still have a hundred pages to read in uh, my Once Upon a Book Club August 2024 20, box. So this one is about my New Year's resolution. Uh, I didn't want to do the video until I got it done. Uh, my New Year's resolution was to visit every Smithsonian Museum. Uh, every year on Christmas, our family gets together. We do a secret Santa exchange and the person you get a gift to, you make an announcement of your resolution. They have to kind of get you to stick with it. I, I got Cordero. Uh, I gave him his gift and it was up to him to keep me on top of my uh, my New Year's resolution. I got the idea because uh, my mother on her birthday did a tour of DC and we went to two museums one day. And I realized there's a lot of museums that are here that I haven't actually seen. I've seen the normal field trip ones, but those were sort of guided tours and I'm not crapping on that. I know why they did it. You have one teacher and 30 students. They have to kind of put you in an area and know where you are. You just can't roam about. It's a pretty much an introduction to the museum. And they're hoping that maybe you can talk to your parents and get them to take you later. Uh, so I'd only been to like two or three growing up. And I wanted to see them all. Now I made this announcement on Christmas. But I hadn't really done any research about the Smithsonian Museums. And it wasn't until after I got home. And I was like, okay, let me find out more about the museums. The first thing I learned is that there are 20. I legit thought there were like 10. There are 20 museums. Another assumption that was on me is that I assumed every single one was in DC. That is not true. Of the 20 museums, 17 are in DC. One is in Chantilly, Virginia, and two are in New York. And so I was like, I'm gonna have to go to New York. Cause I was, I had to be honest with myself and I had to really do it. Another thing I learned is that two of them are closed until 2028 for construction. So I will tell you what I did to, to still stay within my rule and to, to fulfill my new year's resolution. So let's go through these petite museums and I'm going to tell you what I learned about every single one. Every single one in the way, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you proof that I was actually there. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Like I said, I'm I'm very transparent with all of you. So let's go through these, and hopefully you you'll be inspired to not. You don't have to do what I did, but hopefully it'll give you an idea about some of the museums. And if you ever come to the area, you can see you can see a couple of them for yourself and and get an idea of what's there. The first one I wanted to go to was the National Portrait Gallery. I went inside and I went, once you go inside, I went to my left. And the first thing I thought is where are all the portraits? Because if you go to the left, you won't see any portraits. It's all art. Now, don't get me wrong. It is absolutely magnificent art. It will take your breath away. They have something representing every single state. It is just amazing. Uh, but as I walked around, eventually I started seeing portraits. It wasn't until I left that I realized and I looked it up that this one building was actually two museums. It was the Smithsonian American, American Art Museum and the National Portrait Gallery. So if you go inside, it's a big O and one half of that is portraits, the other half of that is art. If you walk around long enough, you'll see it. And this is the one that has the art of, the, of all the presidents. It has their portrait. Now understand that the last former president is the current person with a portrait inside. So the most recent president in there is former President Trump. His picture is the one that's there. Once Biden's term is over and we uh, have the whole ceremony for the new president, whoever that may be, it then Biden's portrait will go there and then Donald Trump's will get put, uh, I believe there's a space for it already to get put in the wall. And then uh, in the center will be President Biden's portrait. Uh, so if Trump's your guy and you want to see it, you need to see it before January, uh, then his portrait will still be there. And after that, his portrait will be off to the side and not in the center. It will be Joe Biden in the center. 
So just putting that out there. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, once again, I did not realize I was seeing two until I got home. And so I thought that when I bought my item, I had only bought something for the National, National Portrait Gallery. I said, oh crap, do I need to go back and I need to buy something for the other one? And that's when one day I flipped this bad boy over and saw it said the Smithsonian American Art on the other side. So one item for both. So that gives you an idea of what this one is like. It's two museums in one building and it has a lot of nooks and crannies inside for you to go around and explore. So keep your eyes open. All right, the next one I went to go see was the Air and Space Museum that is in Chantilly, Virginia. Please understand that yes, the museum itself is free. However, parking there is not. It is one of the few museums that has very ample parking. Lots of parking, but you will pay. Uh, there is a movie theater inside. When I went, they were playing Argyle, the one about the little lady with the spy thing and the cat. Uh, and it's pretty much a huge airplane hangar with a ton of just planes inside. Ton of planes inside. They had a couple things for space, but it was mostly about the planes. They even had some from cartoons. I think there was a cartoon called Planes. And they had a couple of those planes in there. My niece pointed out because she went with me. She was like, oh, that's the movie. That's the plane from that movie. And I was like, I'm glad you know. More power to you. Now, this one does have a Shake Shack inside as well. So museum food isn't typically the best. So she, the fact that it's a chain and you know it, and they do have like branded things like a out of this world milkshake. You know, they, they kind of like lean into it. It's a little cheesy, but it, it's fun. It's still a lot of fun. Uh, so here is my shot glass with my little space man for the Air and Space Museum inside. Now I will say this one and the DC one does have a few of the same items. So if you see something there and you choose not to get it and then you go to one DC, you, there's a chance you, you can get some of the same stuff because this one was there as well. So that's that one. My next one was the National Postal Museum. Now I will be honest, like I'm always honest with you guys. I actually like this one more than I thought I would. I figured it would be boring. It wasn't boring. Uh, you go inside and you see the first stamp that was ever made. And it's like in a really dark, dark little bubble because the light would ruin it. Uh, they have a letter that survived in Hed the Hindenburg, the one that blew up. Uh, they have a letter from that. They have uh, a mailbox from 9-11. They, a lot of heartbreaking stuff. And then they have a bunch of stamps from around the world. There's these like sliding cases that you can pull out and just see stamps from around the world. Uh, they have the most famous mistake ever and the most expensive mistake. That's the, the plane upside down. They have a whole page of those. Uh, and then they let you know like, hey, how the law enforcement, how the post service has its own law enforcement. Because if you send something illegal or you do something illegal with the mail, it is now a federal crime. So they have their own law enforcement. And it's actually pretty amazing to see how that comes in, how that develops. And so I actually enjoy that one way more than I thought it would. And it's right next to Union Station. So if you're in DC and you're in Union Station and you have like maybe an hour and a half to kill before you get your train, go off, walk to your right. A golf side walks to your right and it's there. And you'll see a sign that says National Post and Museum. Go inside, walk around, check it out. It's free. So this is what I got for there. This is the most famous mistake ever. This little stamp, this little guy. And it has information about the stamp. And then you have the Smithsonian National Postal Museum. And that's all the stuff about the inverted Jenny. So if you have that stamp, that stamp cost somebody 24 cents and now it's worth millions. And you're going to see how they made the mistake. Uh, it was two separate plates. Uh, one for the red ink, another one for the blue ink. And the blue one got switched. Pretty much all that was. Fun stuff. But I like that one way more than I thought I would. And you can bring your kids. They have stuff to do for your kids. Yeah, they had like a little scavenger hunt and everything. So please bring them. It, it was actually way more fun than I thought. Uh, the next one was the Renwick Gallery. Now, when I when I looked it up at first, the Renwick Gallery was closed because they had a burst pipe. Uh, they did open it back up. Uh, about 75% of it was open. There was still some part that was damaged and blocked off to the public. But it was still... Uh, a very unique museum 
growing up and doing crochet, I never considered what I was doing as a form of art. I understood it was crafting, but I never saw crafting as art. So when you see things that are knitted, things that are crocheted, woodwork, beading, put it on a wall and saying this is art, it, it, it takes your breath away as someone who does crafting. It's like, hey, what I do is appreciated and what I and what I do is considered beautiful and a part of the story of American history. So to see a gallery that was just for, a uh, see a museum that was especially for arts and crafts was, uh, just took my breath away. And it made me so happy to see it and be acknowledged. So if you know someone who's a crafter, take them to that museum. They, they will actually really enjoy themselves to see that what they do is art. Uh, this one here is a, the beaded fish. So this is all bead work. And this is actually there. And you have the Redwood Gallery. And this is considered the Smithsonian American Art Museum. But really it's all about arts and crafts. So that is my mug from here. Well, this is, I consider this a cup. This isn't big enough to be a mug. This is a cup. <laughs> Me and my mom had a debate about the fact that we prefer coffee in mugs and not cups because cups are too small for the amount of caffeine you have in it. You need a lot of caffeine. All right, so the next one is the Anacostia Community Museum. I believe this is more of an an art, a art teacher museum. It gives you the history of art teachers in D.C. and, you know, the struggles that they've gone through and just trying to get more people into the world of art and trying to encourage that. They even had a little section for children where they can draw a butterfly and it gave you instructions on pick a butterfly and this is how you would draw it if you were in, in art school and this is how we would tell you to do it. Now, this one didn't have a store. I was surprised. I assumed, once again, my fault. I assumed that every Smithsonian Museum would have a store. This one did not. Uh, so they were giving out like pamphlets. So I got this one. And here, so I got that pamphlet and it tells you all about the museum inside. I did make a donation simply because they didn't have a store. To me, buying some of the store is a form of a donation, even though I still gave a donation on top of that. So I did give them a donation. They did have a, a farmer's market outside. I bought some asparagus that day because why not? You know, come on. I'm going to buy some forgot some asparagus. It was actually really good asparagus. So if you've ever been to a farmer's market, you know there's a difference between the produce that you get from a farmer's market compared to a grocery store. Uh, but honestly, this museum is probably the smallest of all the museums. It legit, if you're not reading on the walls and you're just admiring the art and you're watching a couple things, it can take you about 45 minutes to get through it. And I can I honestly be there were only two other people in there besides me. So it is the smallest, the least packed. Like I said, your kids, if they go, they can draw a butterfly. Uh, it's, it's just the smallest museum. It's not that it's not nice. It's just small. And go see it. I think they really need more people. Maybe if they, more people came, they would actually have a store. But, but all, all Smithsonian muse museums need a little love. I'm going to put this on the floor because I have a lot of stuff on my tabletop right now. Uh, the next one I went to was the Author M. Sackler, Sackler Gallery. This is pretty much known as the Asian uh, uh, Art Museum. Now, the way to go through this museum is you go inside and there's just steps going down. Go all the way to the bottom and work your way back up. The reason why I say this is because once you get to the top of that museum, there's a store. But then once you buy things and you leave and you just keep going towards your left, you see steps going up. If you follow those steps up, you'll end up in the Freer Gallery. And that is a whole other museum, but it's all focused on Asian art. Two different museums. It's like the bottom part right here is the author M1 and the Freer is right here on top. And they're connected by a stairway. So you can see both of those museums in one day. And the thing I got from there was these socks because very few things had something for both of them. I wanted something with both of their names on it, but it was just pretty much uh, the Asian art museum on both of them on everything. So I actually 
focus on finding something with the F and the S for Freer and Sackler. So this, I got these really cute socks. So yes, I got these from that museum. Once again, huge museum. Oh, if you go and they still have the peacock room, go see the peacock room. It made me feel very poor. <laughs> it, is, it is an absolutely astounding, amazing, gorgeous room. Please go see it. I instantly felt poor. Go see the peacock room. That's in the Freer Gallery, the bigger one upstairs. All right. So the next one I went to go see is the National Museum of African Art. Now, I decided to go to this one because if you go all the way down uh, the Arthur M. Sackler Museum, you will see a pathway. If you follow that pathway, you will end up in the Museum of African Art. They are connected underneath underground. So I had just seen the other two museums. I'm like, you know what? There's so much time in my day because this is going to be about two hours to get through the Asian Art Museum. Let me just go ahead and just go to the African Art Museum. They're connected. So I went back all the way at the bottom, walked over, and then I went to the African Art Museum. Some of those pieces were huge. I couldn't believe somebody wore something. Your whole, you have a headdress on that's about 10 feet tall and you see a picture of somebody wearing that as a headpiece and you got some strong neck muscles nothing but the utmost respect some of those art pieces like i can see why there wasn't a roof at a certain point they were huge they were humongous they made me feel, they made me feel so tiny but just being able to walk around and seeing different art from different parts of africa was breathtaking i i loved every single second of it uh, so I was able to get this. I got a bunch of um, a bunch of postcards, and I also got a a candle. Cause why not? I love candles. I have a bunch of candles. You guys know this. A bunch of candles. So, and then while I was there, the Smithsonian Castle. So it's Sackler, African art. Smithsonian Castle right in front. So I figured, let me just walk around. I can't go inside because like I said, it's closed to 2028. Let me just give a little tour around and check it out. They have the most amazing gardens there and just like this whole Zen area where you can sit down and read a book and they tell you about all the different plants that they have and they've actually made that outside something to see. So if you get a chance, walk around, check it out. Check out all the topiaries that they have. Now, when I was at the Postal Museum, that's when I learned from the woman who worked in the store that the castle and the other building, the art and industry building was closed. So because it was closed, I bought this snow globe with a castle inside. So even though I was only able to see the outside part, I still got something that represented my castle. So I was actually happy to get that one. Hopefully one day when they do open up, because I heard that even though it's their administrative building, they do have a couple of exhibits on the inside that are open to the public to see. So, so one day I'm planning on going back and checking out what's on the inside. And, and that'll be actually a lot of fun. Uh, the next one I saw was the Hirschhorn Museum and Sculpture Garden. I will say I was expecting way more sculptures. I don't know why I expected to go around it. Be like when you go to an art museum and there are like paintings all over the walls. I expect to see a lot more sculptures all around. I, I feel like there were more sculptures in the Asian art museum than there were at the Herschel. I wanted to see more sculptures. And so I wasn't disappointed. I was just kind of confused. And it was like, well, most of it's outside. And we brought some of those inside simply because they were doing exterior work. And I was like, huh, I, was just, I just really wanted to see more sculptures. I wanted to see something like the David and something made of wood and then something made of marble. I just wanted a lot more sculptures. Now, one room I did find interesting was a room that had been painted, painted black and had a whole bunch of white, white, white writing all over it. And I actually took the time to read some of that writing and some of it was pretty funny. Some of it was a little bit thought provoking and not in a bad way. It was just thought provoking. And it's like, wow, I never thought about things this way. And it kind of asked a question and 
you know, it's actually pretty interesting to kind of get in that room and look around and see what was there. Uh, I had been to the Hirshhorn before for something called Infinity Rooms, where you go into this like mirrored room, they shut the door, and there's uh, like, like twinkle lights all around, so it feels like you're in the middle of space. I had been there before, so I had loved that installation for the artist. I thought it was absolutely astounding. I, and that installation was no longer there. Uh, but once again, I, I thought that we were way more, more sculptures than what was there. Uh, so this is what I got from there. Art is life. Uh, life is art. Art is life. I never separated. And so that's for the hitch horn. Proof that I went there. All right. Next one I went to was the National Museum of, um, of the American Indian. So of the indigenous people. Now that was one that was in New York as well as the Smithsonian Design Museum. Uh, so I went to that one. There we go. So New York and then the Design Museum. Now what I did was I took a, I did a day trip to New York. I went on the train, traveled to New York, went to, uh, the one for the indigenous people first, cause it was the one furthest away from the train station. So I took a, a cab there, went there. It took about an hour and a half to get through. Uh, got to another cab, went to the design museum. We, my mother went with me. Cause when she heard about church, she said, Oh, that's fun. Can I come? I said, absolutely. Mom's fun. Mom's great. So I went with her. Uh, we went to the design museum. We found it first and then we went to go get lunch. We took an hour out. There's a, um, I think is it like Isa Deli? It's easy something, but it go there. It's delicious food. It's delicious food and a lot of food for the price. So go there. It's right, right around the corner. It's like red. It has some places that are outside, some places that are inside. So it's actually really good food. And we did not, we were so happy we went there to eat. No complaints. And then we went to the design museum right afterwards. After that, we took a, a cab from the design museum back to Strange Station. We had an hour before our train left. So that's how we did it. Uh, lots of fun, got a lot done in the day. Was happy I took the day trip to New York. I was considering staying the night, but seeing the prices of hotels in New York, your girl couldn't have done it. The day trip was enough. Uh, so uh, the first museum, I did love it, but there's one in DC and I'll get back to that later. Uh, but this one, uh, was a lot of fun, had a lot of interesting art, had a lot of amazing history uh, about indigenous culture that I did not know. Uh, and just walking around the area, it's very open. There's like art on top, on the bottom, all around. Excuse me. Uh, and then I went to the Design Museum. Now, the Design Museum is a little bit different. It does cost money to see the artist installation. There is a, a part downstairs that's the store, the restaurant, and sort of the the art of signs. When I say the art of signs, I mean like the stop sign. To see how the stop sign has changed over the years. To see how the the yield sign has changed over the years. It has like the art of sign down there. And you can see that part for free. Now, if you want to see the artist installation, you have to pay, I believe it's $22. Uh, you can see that upstairs. You're seeing the person who designs the sets. I'm so sorry. This is escaping my mind right now, the name. But the person who designs the sets for Adele, Miley Cyrus, Beyonce. I never thought of it as that's someone's job to create something that's a screen, that's a movable art, that you can see it and visualize it. And, and, and amazing. And then you can see the other artwork that they've done. Because the stage design is just one small piece of art that they've done over time. And this person just never stops creating. And it's astounding to see their thought process. Because that's one of the things you get to see. You get to see that person's thought process about how they come up with the designs they come up with. And like I say they draw every single day. So you get to see that artwork for yourself. And so I was actually blown away by that one. Because the, the art itself moves. And you get a presentation and then it opens up and you get to walk through it. So don't, when you go see the presentation at the beginning, don't leave. Stay through it because there's a part that opens up 
it's like it's like they take a piece of a knife and they cut through it and then it opens up and you get to walk through it and you get to continue on with the installation it is worth the 22 dollars. i did enjoy it uh once we walked through and we saw a couple things we kind of left the group because we realized they were just talking way more than we needed me and my mom are good with like just showing us the way and we can read and stop as we as we see fit uh but once again i i was just blown away by what was there and how that artist uh, does their job and you can see why they are as famous as they are uh, absolutely astounding uh so then came back to dc uh later on i went to go see the national museum of the american indian that is in dc yes one is in new york another is in dc now i do like the one in dc better first of all the building itself represents the culture the one in New York, it's probably because it is New York and a lot of the buildings are already there. They pretty much just took an old building, put the art inside, and made it what it is. The one in D.C. was made with the thought of the culture in mind. The building has just all this natural light filtering through it. Uh, it has like this waterfall outside and it, and it just sort of works with the environment around it so you can see that they really took time to learn about the culture when they designed the building itself and there's just so much more art and so much more history than the one in new york the one in new york is nice but the one in dc is better and i'm just being honest i'm not crapping on new york don't come for me in the comments i'm not crapping on new york but if you are from the area, come to the one that's in D.C. If you can, take a, take a train to D.C. for a day and, and see the one that we have in D.C. And, and, and tell me what you really think about the one in D.C. compared to the one in New York. So here's a piece that I got from it. It's a little keychain. And if you flip it around, it says the museum. And you can actually see the building. You can kind of see what I mean. They built the, the museum with the culture in mind. And it actually flips around. So that's the keychain I got from it. So, what is next? Well, so we're almost done, I promise. Uh, we're on uh, number 15. Uh, this is the National Air and Space Museum that was in D.C. Please understand that you need a timed ticket to go this way. You just cannot. They may be nice and let you in if you're like one or two people without a ticket. But they need to have, you need to have a time ticket because, ticket because they're trying to control the flow of traffic that's in there. Because it's still one of the most popular museums that they had. This place was crowded. And they talk a lot more about space. The one in Chantilly is nice, but it's a hangar with just a bunch of planes inside. The one in D.C. is more, is more of a museum. There's stuff about the people and the culture, and they even have a section about uh, flight attendants and, you know, how it changed over time and how the first guy who ever wanted to be a flight attendant had to sue in order to be a flight attendant. And, and that's just crazy to me. Like, hey, let him do his thing. Let him make his money. Okay. It was actually a crazy kind of read about that. Uh, and then they had a lot more about space in the one in D.C., and now some, even though it, it's still bigger, even though some of it's shut down because they're adding new stuff to it, they're actually adding more on. So this thing is only going to get bigger. Now they have the, um, the theater that's inside that I believe it was, it was two different shows going on. It's one about dark matter and one about, uh, the planets. I went to the one about dark matter. Now, please understand if you go to see the show, if you're someone who's easily disoriented, this thing will make you dizzy. The seats are already reclined for you. You can't readjust them. So you're laying back. And as this thing above you that's like a dome, as it moves, you, I felt like I was moving. At some point, I had to close my eyes and tell my body that you were not physically moving. It's the screen that's moving. And I remember going, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And so I looked at the floor, I looked at my shoes. I had to like stop looking at this because I felt like I was moving. I felt like I was falling. So I had to get reoriented again. Now, if you do go see their shows, they do sell snacks. They treat it like a movie theater. Like they have popcorn and chips and candies and soda. So you can buy snacks and you go in and you walk around and you see all this really cool stuff. 
And then the guy at the counter when I went to go buy my stuff asked me, what do you prefer, air or space? And legit, I've never been asked that question before. And I had to really think about it. And I had, and tell, I told him, I like, honestly, like air better. Because without air, you wouldn't have space. We wouldn't thought flight was possible until we flew in the air. And then we thought, like, maybe we can go to space. So I will give space credit for giving us thought. I mean, I'll give air credit for giving us space. And so he's like, oh, that's a, that's a really cool answer that you said that. But that I had never been asked that question before to really think about it. So let me know in the comments before. If you guys this part, what do you like better? Aerospace. I want to know. So here is the little rocket ship that I got from that museum. I thought it was really cool. And so, like I said, a lot of the stuff that they have in Chantilly in that store, you can actually find in DC store as well. Uh, one thing that I did get from this one, because some of the stores I just went insane in, was I got pure nickel that's sitting in acrylic. I was actually, I actually love this. I thought it was actually really cool to just have that. Uh, and I got the nickel because it was honestly the cheapest one. They had like copper. I think they had a little bit of titanium, but that was like way more expensive. So I got the cheapest one. Hey, like I said, I'm honest with you guys. Your girl got the cheapest one. Uh, but the next, the next one was that the Air and Industries building was right next to it. Right next to it. So I went ahead and once again, that's one that's closed for 2028. So I went around. I took pictures. They have an absolutely beautiful garden with a lot of topiary. Uh, they even had a little notes say, hey, the such and such a plant was here, but I had to go away. And, you know, it was really cute little messages for all the plants that couldn't be there anymore. But I would say if you get a chance, walk around the area, check it out. Hopefully when it opens up in 2028, I can actually go inside to see it. Because I couldn't actually see the building on the inside. I went ahead and I got this Smithsonian Institute globe with the building inside. Full snow globe. And then I also got the actual Smithsonian Institute cup with the same building on the outside as well. So that will represent the, the art industries building that I could not get inside of because it's closed in 2028. But like I said, I took pictures of the outside and saw the topiaries and all the gardens that they had there. Just hit myself in the lip. Next one, number 17 of 20 was the National Museum of Natural History. Now, let me warn you. If you go there, it does not matter what time you go. It will be crowded. You can go on Thanksgiving Day at 10 a.m. and best believe it will be crowded. If you are not somebody who can't handle other people's kids because they're bouncing around, this is not your museum. It is a very cool museum. It has dinosaurs and skeletons and gems and, you know, the Hope Diamond. It has everything in there. But please understand, there are kids everywhere because kids want to see the dinosaurs. They want to see the big, huge jaguar and the elephant and all. They want to see that. And so they're so excited and they're bouncy. And you can see parents trying their best to, to get their kids. Some of them. Some of y'all just let them go free. Hey. Okay. Your child, your business. But if you're someone who can't handle that, then this is not your museum. I can tell you I got there at 10 a.m. And there was already about 200 people in line. And mind you, it opens at 10. I thought, oh, I'll get there at 10 o'clock and I'll walk in when it opens. We should be good. No, 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 no. 10 a.m., there was already a line with 200 people in it. The Natural History Museum will always be crowded. It will always have kids in it. If you cannot handle that, this is not your museum. Just being honest with you. Now, once again, this had everything. Another thing that it had, which was unique, was that it had four stores. Four. A mammal store, a dinosaur store, a gym store, and then a regular store. Now, some of these sections, you cannot leave without going through the store. So it's not like you could actually avoid the store. You're going through a store. So if you're a parent and you have a kid, you need to get them focused. 
and say that we are only spending this much money. If you want something that costs more than that, you better break off your own money or you ain't getting it. Stick to it. Okay? Because this girl lost a darn gone mind. And that's gone. Because I went through all of them. And I got something out of all of them. And that's my fault. All right? It's my fault. Let's see a couple things that I got. All right? One thing I got is a dino foot shot glass. And then once I got it, I realized it did not have Smithsonian on it. It was underneath it on the foot. But that, to me, that did not count. So, then I got this shot glass with the Natural History Museum on it. And I think this is a red panda. Could be a fox. Could be a red panda. I just got it because I thought little homie was cute. Not going to lie to you. I got pencils with rocks in them. Yeah, so these are legit rocks. They actually sell rocks. You can actually get a bag, fill it up with rocks, and buy just straight up rocks. I, I know some of y'all going, I can go outside and go get me rocks for free. I hear you, and you're right. But people are buying rocks. And I bought a dagger pencil with rocks in it. Not only did I buy this one, I bought three more for my niece and my nephews. It's okay to judge me. Please judge me. I did it. Another thing I bought from them, uh, as you guys know, my birthday is in August. So I bought an uncut version of my gemstone. See if I can move it around so you can see the size of it. Get it that way. So this is an uncut version of my gemstone. Uh, I got this. I, I got the smallest one because I did get the cheapest one. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I swear to you guys. I'm going to tell you the truth. I got to use one in here. Uh, it was worth it. I know that at some point I can get this cut and turn it into a pendant or earrings when I'm when I'm ready and I make a decision. I can even turn this into a gigantic ring, uh, but completely uncut stone. I thought I could not pass it up, especially when I saw it was my own birthstone. I love my birthstone. Okay. Once again, lost my whole mind when I went there. I went to every single four of those stores. I ended up buying something. Yeah. I I, I should have went in there with a, a game plan. And I didn't. Same reason why I'm telling y'all to have a game plan when y'all do this. Please have a game plan. If not, you're going to be like me. And you're going to buy. You're going to, ooh, ah, wow. Yeah, amazing. I want this. I want that. I want that. Who didn't see yourself? Don't be, don't be me. See me as a horrible warning. If you can't be a good example, be a horrible warning. I'm your horrible warning. Have a plan when you go in there. Just know for yourself. All right. Uh, the next one I went to was the National Museum of American History. I actually went to this one on my birthday with my mom. This is the one that has the dresses from the First Ladies. You can see those. Uh, I think the most recent one they had in there was actually Jill Biden's dress. Her dress is there with her matching mask at the time because we were under the mandates for the virus. So she had the matching mask. Uh, it was actually a very pretty dress. Uh, Milani's dress was there. It was actually a gorgeous dress. Uh, some of them, you can tell that this dress was done during a depression. You can tell that was a depression dress. Some of them, what? I saw the dress like, honey, I can rock that look right now. Your dress might have been made in 19 or something, but I can rock that dress right now. That dress was hidden and holding so I would say check out some dresses. They were absolutely astounding. Uh, another thing is that I feel like this this museum should be called the History of Pop Culture because there was so many references to like Muhammad Ali, Oprah, uh, 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 The Wizard of Oz, Prince, Michael Jackson. They had so much stuff about just pop culture. I feel like this was a, the history of pop culture. Maybe that's really American culture, it's pop culture. Now, this was the first one that kind of made me feel a little bad. I felt attacked because they had like this just tower of old cell phones and I own like five of those phones in there. Like they had the flip phone, the sidekick. I'm like, really? A phone that I own is now in a museum? I feel personally attacked. If you grew up with the 501 Spanish verbs book, it is on that wall in the museum. Feel attacked. It's okay. They had an answer machine in there. Attacked. Okay? <laughs> like really? If you want to feel real old, go to that museum. 
Okay, something you own was in there on a wall saying, remember when? That was like 10 years ago. Go have several seats. I want to fight you right now. I am, I'm being attacked. Okay. <laughs> All right, let me start tripping. So the one I got from there was this laser cut wood ornament that says National Museum of American History. Uh, I also got a, a ruby red slipper for my Christmas tree. I love that one. So these are two very amazing ones I cannot wait to put on my Christmas tree this year. Uh, the next one I went to was the National Museum of African American History and Culture. Now, this one, you have to get a time ticket. It's still extremely popular. So they're just trying to control the traffic flow. Once again, you may be able to finesse your way in there if you're like one person trying to get in without a ticket, but you need to get a time ticket. Now, this museum took me the longest to get through yes i am african-american yes i did think i spent a little bit of time in there but there are like three floors underground a middle lobby level and then three floors above ground so about seven floors of museum and the bottom is about a slavery and uh what it took to come out of that and so the bottom is actually built like a slave ship the floors are like wooden and then it's very cramped. So if you're like shoulder to shoulder looking at, you know, African art and then learning about the first set of slave ships and you're, you're all cramped up in there and it's the meant to feel that way on, on purpose. You're meant to feel uncomfortable just like they were like, well, not just like they were, but you're meant to feel that uncomfort of being so close to the next to somebody having this creaky floor and then they kind of pipe music that can sound like groans and moans. So you're meant to be uncomfortable. But as you get further and further up, it starts to open up a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And then once you get to a certain part, there's a, a memorial for Emmett Till uh, and they, they won't let you, they tell you to put your phone in your pocket because for some people, some reason people were taking pictures, like I guess probably trying to be funny and it was actually disgusting and so they say out of respect for the family we ask you to put your phone in your pocket so you're not even tempted to take a photo now they do warn you before you go up to the casket i think there's like an actual body that looks like his i did not want to see that just me being who i am i just knew it would be too much so i actually kind of stood back i saw the casket that was it i did not need to see inside of it that was not something that i needed to see uh there are warnings uh they say if anything is in a red flame red frame you may see something that is visually uncomfortable it's usually something of a, a lynching or something like that so they try to warn you ahead of time that there are things that if you're not comfortable seeing we're going to try to warn you ahead of time that you're going to see something that's very disturbing and as you walk through of course there are video displays talk to you about you know, protests, uh, uh, different riots, and uh, and just uh, about coming to, to see the airmen and learning about that. You get to see old houses. They have some that's inside, so you can see, like, how tiny they were to have, like, a family of, like, four living in this one, like, something the size of a living room. You would consider a living room. They consider it a house. And you're like walking through like, oh my gosh, I can't imagine living with my mom, my dad, my sisters in this tiny little space. But people did it. And they survived and they were good. Now, if you want to, I understand that that's not for everybody. That's a lot to handle uh, at a museum. So if you're one of those people who's like, I'm just not ready for that yet. And taking race out of it. Because I know some people who are African-American who just don't, they don't want to see stuff like that. It's very difficult for them to see those type of things. I would say go to the upper levels. The upper levels are about art, music, sport, science. It's all about that stuff. It's all about the, you know, yay, yay, we made it. And, but it still talks about the struggle of what they had to go through to get the recognition that they deserve. But you're seeing like boxing gloves. You're seeing Kobe's jersey. You're, you're seeing the celebration of of the the tail end of everything you had to go through to get to this point it wasn't easy but you're here so the upper levels are all about that 
So if you're someone who's just uncomfortable with that, the other stuff, I would say go, don't be dissuaded or dis, disencouraged going. I would just say go to the upper levels and see that stuff first. And then go back another time and slowly see the other parts and introduce yourself to those parts because it's it's meant to just really get you into that history and understand it and know it and and be a part of it and, and really open your eyes to everything that happened. Uh, so I, it took me all day. I got there at 10 a.m. and as I was in the store, they made the announcement they were closing in 15 minutes. I had not realized I was there all day. That took me the longest to get there. Maybe it's because of me really wanting to read and know about my own culture and my own history. Maybe that's why. Maybe it's because it was seven floors of stuff, which had stuff everywhere in the, every single nook and cranny. So once again, you need a time ticket. Give yourself as much time in the world. If you can't handle the, the slavery part and all that stuff, go upstairs. If not, go through the whole thing. Start from the bottom, work your way up. That's how it was meant to be experienced. Bottom, top. Now, I got a shot glass with the building on it that's meant to look like uh, an African crown. Uh, I got a bunch of pencils that have quotes from Frederick Douglass. This one is Harriet Tubman. And then this one's Frederick Douglass as well. If there's no struggle, there's no process. And I got these also in mugs as well. Uh, very happy to get those. Uh, and then I got like a couple t-shirts from there as well. Uh, so that one, that like I said, it took me all day. You have to have a time ticket to get in. Take your time, go through it. If you can't handle the slavery stuff, go upstairs, look around there. All right. So the very last one I went to, and this one was a surprise for me, was the zoo. The zoo is a Smithsonian museum. It is called the National Zoological Park. So it is a Smithsonian museum. You do need a ticket. Uh, it's not a time ticket, but you need a ticket. You can pay to park, but the ticket to get inside is free. It is extremely large. Uh, it's a zoo. There are some parts where you are be you are warned that the animals roam free here. I believe it was the bird exhibit where you if you go upstairs they let you know like hey the birds here are freely flying around and you're walking. So you need to be prepared because you were at the zoo. I got to see elephants and sloths and I actually had a really fun time getting through there. Once again, I went in on a Wednesday uh, in the middle of the day and still that park had kids and I think to myself wow either they're really they were really really young or you could tell they were part of like some some school program so once again if you cannot handle kids this is not for you there no matter what time of the day what day of the week you go there will be kids there and these kids as well behaved as parents let them be just putting that out there uh, but I knew I would love the zoo. I haven't been to the zoo since like uh, about 10 years ago I went to the zoo. So I hadn't been in a while and I made sure I went through every single part of the zoo and I got to see everything and I loved it. Uh, so I got this guy from Smithsonian National Zoo. I got this little guy. He actually looks a lot like the other guy. So once again, this one's for natural history, black one natural history. This one is from the zoo. So I actually saw this one or something at least close to it in the zoo. And so I made sure I didn't buy that one because I didn't want to end up with two. So some of these things are actually rebranded and just have different etchings of the names on the back. So just keep in mind. So that was everything I learned about every single museum, Smithsonian Museum. I cannot believe I did it. I got it done in nine months. I started on uh, Martin Luther King Day this year. I finished by September the 25th. And I saw every Smithsonian Museum, even though two were closed, I got to see the outside of it. 
I got to walk around, see the gardens that they have around those buildings that were astounding. Go check it out. Uh, once again, I will say I love the African American Museum. I I love the Zion Museum. I love the um the Indian Art Museum, the Indigenous Art Museum, uh, in DC. I'm gonna always be an air and space girl, cause I'm just a tech nerd, and I I gotta get credit to the Natural History Museum. Uh, the smallest one by far was the uh, no, I'm sorry, was the Anacostia Community Museum. Please show them love. They need it uh, because they are the smallest. They are so far away from the mall. I think people will visit them a lot less. Maybe if people would visit them a little bit more, they would actually have a store. So give them a shout out. Give them some love. And to honestly, the Hirshhorn, you guys need some more sculptures. If you're going to be a sculpture museum, get more sculptures. I'm, I'm just saying. Uh, you feel like another, you feel like it's an art museum. I came there to see sculptures. It should be sculptures. And that's how I feel about that. So if you've ever been to the area, tell me what your favorite museum has been so far. Tell me which one you want to visit now. Uh, and let me know what you guys bought. Like I'm telling you right now, you probably saw about, mm, about 6% of the stuff I bought. The rest of the stuff I did not bring downstairs. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah, it was it was a little nuts, but I'm so happy I got all 20 museums done. I'm glad I didn't know about it ahead of time, or I probably not would not have done it. I wear comfortable shoes. Uh, like I said, make sure you check it out ahead of time to see if you need tickets or not. I thought I went through all the ones with tickets, but just double check. Make sure you need your ticket and plan your trip accordingly. Uh, find places around to eat. The museum food has never been good. I never ate at one of them. I tried it a long time ago. It's it's never good and it's too expensive. Seriously, go outside, find food outside. All right. So with that being said, thank you for going through this journey with me. And in life, there's black and white. But with me, if you like, comment and subscribe, you will get at least one shade of gray. Bye guys.